Is the Samsung Galaxy A10e worth buying in 2020? Well, in this video, we're gonna find out. Hi everyone, this is Kevin here, and this is the Samsung Galaxy A10e. Now this is not a new phone. In fact, it was launched in August of 2019. So in not too many months from now, it will actually be one year old. But I know that the phone still is very relevant, many carriers still offer it, and it's still very popular online as well. So in this video, I wanna have a discussion over whether or not you should get this phone or maybe consider something else. Now starting off, here is the box. You can see on the front, we have a picture of the device itself. Now this phone is available factory unlocked. You can check that out through the link in the video description, but you can also get it at a variety of different carriers. And to be honest, I feel like the only situation where you would wanna get this phone is through a carrier because they typically offer really good deals. I don't really think buying it factory unlocked is worth it because there are many other phones offered factory unlocked in the $180 price range that are much better. But I know that many carriers are offering it through buy one get one free deals or you even have the ability to get the phone for free if you are switching into whatever carrier offers the device. So there are many opportunities to get this phone at a really good price. Now opening up the box, the first thing we have here is a packet. Now in this packet, there are a variety of different items included. Now it could be different based on the specific variation of the phone that you do get. We have some literature in the box, so terms and conditions in both English and Spanish. We also have English and Spanish quick start guides, so that's really helpful. Moving on, we have the actual phone itself. We're gonna put that off to the side for a second though. We also have a USB-C cable for charging and data transfer. So this phone does have USB-C despite it being one of the lower end devices from Samsung. We have a SIM card removal tool, and we have a wall adapter. It looks like it's a 10 watt adapter, but here is the actual phone itself. This is the Samsung Galaxy A10e. Now the device features a pretty large 5.83 inch display. The display itself is PLS TFT. Now, even though it isn't AMOLED, you can probably see already through the video that it is extremely bright and vibrant. So I'm certainly a big fan of that. So I think overall it is a good looking display which is great for consuming content. The display itself is 720p, so we are getting a decent PPI here of 295. It has a 19 and a half by nine aspect ratio, and it features an 81.4% screen to body ratio. So you can see up top here, we do have a water drop notch. We also have a little bit of a thicker bottom bezel as well. And in that notch is a five megapixel front facing camera. Now, I've never actually done a proper review of this phone, and I know that this phone isn't exactly new, but if you'd like me to do an updated 2020 review of the device, then let me know in the comment section below. But with the phone, we're getting 32 gigabytes of internal storage with micro SD card expansion, so you do have the ability to expand that. There is no wireless charging with the phone. There is also no fingerprint sensor at all but we do get face unlock with the device. So if you are someone that is a fan of face unlock, especially someone that prefers it over a fingerprint sensor, then I think you're definitely gonna appreciate that with the Galaxy A10e. Now the camera on the back is an eight megapixel camera and it does still take decent photos and videos. So you can see here's things through the front camera. We'll flip around to the rear camera. And of course, you're not gonna win any photography awards with the phone, but at the same time, it still does take decent looking photos and videos. So that's a good thing. Now this device features two gigabytes of RAM and the Samsung Exynos 7884 processor. So neither of those two things are too great, but again, this is kind of a lower end Samsung device, so I don't expect too much more than that. But I did run a benchmark test with the phone and I'll show you the score right now. And I got an overall score of 97701. So that's not too bad. That's a pretty decent score for a lower end device, and it will get the job done for a good chunk of people out there. Now, if you are someone that does do quite a bit of social media on your phone, or somebody who does more advanced tasks, such as high-end gaming, or maybe you like to edit video on your device, then I definitely feel like you will run into quite a few slowdowns, and will probably be looking for an upgrade not too long after getting this phone. But if you are someone that does more casual tasks, like 
a lot of phone calls and a lot of text messages, but maybe occasional social media and occasional web browsing, then this phone really is a no-brainer. Now video recording with the device maxes out at 1080p, so that's pretty decent. We're getting a pretty beefy battery with the phone as well at 3000 milliamp hours. Now this variant of the A10e is the Metro by T-Mobile variant. So I don't know if this is the case for the other variants out there, but this phone is still stuck on Android 9 Pie. So there is no Android 10. I don't know when it's coming. It probably will come eventually, but at the moment there is no Android 10 and also no Samsung One UI 2.0. But for many people out there, that's really a non-issue because you'll be able to do everything that you would typically do with an Android device with Android 9 Pie on here. Now the phone does not have NFC, so no NFC with this, but we do get USB-C at the bottom. So I'm certainly happy about that. Glad that it doesn't have micro USB because we do have micro USB with the Galaxy A10. But taking a closer look at the hardware here, I already talked a lot about the display. Overall, I feel like it over delivers here, especially considering that my expectations of the display with this phone before I first used it were pretty low but I think it looks really nice. It's nice and bright and clear. Certainly not quite as good as AMOLED would be, but certainly it does still get the job done. Now taking a look at the left side of the phone, we have just the slot for the micro SD card and SIM card. The phone does feature a plastic build all throughout. On the right side of the phone, we have the power button and volume button. On the top, we have the noise canceling microphone. On the bottom, we have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. We have the USB-C port for charging and data transfer. We have the microphone and the speaker. And then on the back of the phone, it is pretty simple here. We just have the camera module with just one camera. We have the flash and the Samsung logo. Now this material on the back, of course, is plastic. It does pick up fingerprints as well. But overall, I still am happy with the build and quality of this phone, especially since it is so inexpensive. So in conclusion, is the Samsung Galaxy A10e worth buying in 2020? Now I already talked earlier in the video about that. Now here's how Instagram looks on the phone. It's still a very smooth experience here, so certainly not too bad at all. You can also go through, check out your various stories, see what's going on with that. So that works very smoothly too. You can also swipe over and create your own stories. So I'm creating a video right now with the Samsung Galaxy A10e. Another cool thing about this phone too is that the microphones are very decent as well. So if you are using this phone to create content, of course it won't be quite as good as a flagship would be, but at the same time, the videos that you will be able to take with the device are still usable. So in conclusion, is the Samsung Galaxy A10e worth buying in 2020? That's really the big question that we're trying to answer here in this video. And like I mentioned earlier, if you are buying this phone factory unlocked, then no, it is not worth it, especially if you end up paying 180 for it. Now, if you can scoop this up used, maybe on eBay, for example, and get it at, and get it at under 120, then I feel like it is worth it. But that's assuming that it is unlocked. Now, if you're gonna get this phone locked, then I would say that you really wanna take advantage of the various carrier deals out there. Now, of course, that differs from carrier to carrier. I would certainly recommend getting in touch with your local carrier store, seeing if they're offering any deals for this phone and see what their offer is. And if they are able to offer you a good deal, then it might make this phone worth it. But definitely with other newer A-series phones out now, like the A11, for example, which is pretty much selling for the same price as the unlocked variant of this phone, and the A01 and upcoming A21, you know, there's a lot of other awesome options out there, especially if you still wanna stick with Samsung. One other thing I didn't really mention though is that there are two variants of the A10e. There's an international unlocked variant and there's also a US unlocked variant of the phone. Now the US unlocked variant will work with all four US carriers, including Sprint and Verizon, so keep that in mind as well. And that is the variant that is 179. I still don't feel like that's worth it though. I feel like there are better options available and 180 is just a lot of money to spend for this particular device. But I hope you found this video to be helpful and informative. If you have any questions at all, I could potentially make a follow-up to this. But this is the Samsung Galaxy A10e in 2020. Hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely check out the links in the video description to see the most up-to-date pricing for the device. But this is Kevin here, and I will see you in the next one.